and I'm going to go. So I know there was a lot of confusion about the, the homework, uh, particularly the 264 field. And so I thought I would spend today going over the 264 field again. Uh, I've got some, um, some PowerPoints that we're going to go through. And um, if you want to turn in your homework, like go back and turn your homework in again uh, afterwards, you're more than welcome to. You should know it's it's not graded. It's it's more it's just um, you get credit for doing it. And um, we may or may not get to the three three x fields today. If we don't, then we'll discuss those next week. So we'll be moving everything back a week. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this PowerPoint. And can everyone see my PowerPoint? OK, thank you for letting me know. And so, uh, as I stated at the beginning of this class, we're going to focus on MARC and not on RDA. But I've decided that there needs to be a little bit of RDA. I think um, there seems to be some confusion about what fields get used and what fields don't get used. So I thought I'd give just a really brief RDA overview. And some of this will explain why we do things the way we do now in MARC. And so for starters, um, we don't use the 260 field anymore in, uh, in MARC. Um, they decided to go ahead and create the 264. And I'm, I'm not really sure why, because they do the same thing. And the other, some of the other big differences are, you know, we've done away with the GMD, the general material designation, that subfield H that you see in the AACR2 records. And that's been replaced with the 33X fields, which we'll talk about next week, unless we get to them today. And then, of course, no more Latin abbreviations. And I think, um, some of what, some of RDA that really has affected Mark and what we do in Mark is that RDA was designed um, to help improve resource discovery, to make it easier to find stuff. Because as we know, our catalogs, it's not always easy to find stuff. Um, some of that's because of the cataloging rules. Some of that is just the way I think our ILS systems are set up. Um, And, and so because of that, it was decided that RDA, that the rec, that data would be much more precise. And we, we would be much more, um, it says more precisely segmented. And, and, and basically that means that we would really just break out that data and, and really get it down to kind of its smallest, I guess, point. Uh, at the same time, you know, we focus more on relationships. How are objects related to one another? Or um, how is it related to the people who helped create it or the publisher? And then, and I think they probably use a, a similar phrase in AECR2, but in RDA, we have this phrase called core or non-optional data elements. And those are things that we do have to include in our records. And then within that, we have some things that are like core optional, where if the core, the required element isn't there, then we move on kind of to the second choice. And so this brings us to the 264. And um, where people really seem to have the most confusion was not so much with the subfields. Uh, everyone seems to have a, um, a really good grasp of what those subfields do. It, it's these indicators. And 
they they are that's a really big change this is part of the the data becoming more segmented and more precise um under aacr2 we could kind of get away with smushing things together or making a lot of assumptions you know if we didn't like if we saw a company listed on like a pamphlet or a book um we could just assume it was the publisher and it may not necessarily have been the publisher and so now we're having to get in and, and, and really be precise in how we that how we label that data. And so um, I'm not going to talk about the, the zero in that second um, indicator because that's used really with unpublished materials um, like kind of archival things or stuff that just it's never been published. Um, and then one is the publication and that that is a core element that's something that has to be included in the record and and it's exactly what it sounds like it's the publisher and then you have a two which is the distributor and you see in, 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 in t distribution and manufacture and copyright date are all non-core you, you don't they're non-optional you don't have to include those in the record um, you do if like for example there's no publisher listed, but there's a distributor listed. And you see that a lot, um, like with movies, with DVDs, uh, because it might list that that distribution company. And in manufacture is like the printer, you know, who who produced the item. Um, and you don't you, you you don't see that listed a lot. And then that brings us down to four, which is, is the copyright date. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later. So we've got some examples here, and um, you can see um, that we have the publisher here in the A, um, or actually, sorry, that's the place of publication, and then the publisher. And all of that information comes from your title page or um, your main source of information which is um, in books it is your title page and and then you can see that I have um, the copyright date in brackets and and that's because it, the copyright date is actually listed here on the item and then you can also see where I've put the 264 with that indicator 4 and I've gone ahead and included the, the, pub, the copyright date um, here as the actual copyright date and so I think you know last week I said um, that the subfield C here is that's the publication date and if you didn't know the publication date you could go ahead and use the copyright date and um, you have to put that in brackets and that's because in RDA the publishing date is core and the publishing date and if it's not there, then you go to the kind of the next element, which is the which is the copyright date. And but they're not the same thing. Um, and that's why we do put it in brackets. And a lot of catalogers, myself included, will then go ahead and do a 264 with an indicator of four, uh, just basically to tell people that that copyright date, that that date in the brackets is the copyright date. Does that make sense? Okay, good, good. And if it's not, please feel free to jump in and ask a question anytime. Uh, this is probably one of the bigger changes with with RDA is the way we think about the publication information, that it has become much more precise. So I've got another example here. Oh, I see a typo. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Here, you know, it's on the title page. You can see where uh, we have our publish, we have our publisher, we have our place of publication, and then you can also see where we have a publication date, and we also have. Do we have a copyright date here? We also have the copyright date here. So, oh, okay. 
You have a copyright symbol showing in the second in 264. I thought the symbol was used when the publisher owned the copyright, not the, uh, the author. Am I misinformed? That is a really, really interesting question. And, you know, I don't know. I've always just used that copyright date there, um, regardless of who owned it, just to show that it's the copyright date. Uh, it's something... I will definitely look into because I don't know the answer to that. If anyone else has some insight into that, please feel free to um, type in a question, type it in and let me know. Or if you guys want, I know people don't like to talk. I can always unmute your mics uh, and then you don't have to wait to type and then have me repeat everything. And if you don't, I, I, I did talk to um, our, um, why am I drawing a blank on her name now? Krista Burns, who's kind of, you could say she's like, a, um, a lot of you probably know who Krista is. You know, she works a lot with libraries with doing like their E-rate or um, if they've got any kind of questions about really anything. Um, if you don't have a microphone and you're interested in getting one, you can contact Krista and her email is just krista.burns at nebraska.gov and she has some microphones she can send to you anyway um lots of books i catalog are homemade family histories if they are not published so do i use a zero in the 264 second indicator yes diane if you're not seeing like a publisher listed anywhere um or anything that says like a manufacturer, like a printer, then yes, I would go ahead and use a zero there. Uh, I have cataloged that kind of stuff. And sometimes it might say like self-published or um, published by the author. And in that case, then you would use a one. But if you're not seeing anything, I would just assume it hasn't been published and use it as and use a zero there. And so if there aren't any more questions, which questions are good, so would you add a second 264 for the copyright for this example? The example I have up on the screen, I'm assuming that's what you mean, Mary, and you can. You can certainly go ahead and do that. That's one of those things that's called catalogers judgment and as some of you have probably, most of you probably know this, that there's a lot of, you have a lot of options sometimes. And it comes down to, you know, who your audience is, your library, you know, whatever cataloging policies you may have, um, what kind of time you have, um, how, how persnickety do you feel, are you feeling that day? <laughs> and yes, but yes, you can do a, two, a second 264 here. Um, with that copyright date. And so if I've answered your question, Mary, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on to my next example. Yep, okay, cool. And so I did a movie here. And movies are kind of, as I said, a lot of times you, there isn't a publisher listed on a movie. Uh, you might see a distributor. Or you might, or the other thing is, you might see that corporate entity and you don't, you don't quite know what their role is. And so you have a couple of different options. You can go in and you can Google that company, that name, and, and see if you can't find like their website and it might tell you. Or you can assume that it is like the publisher and use a one there. And what I did in this example, because I know 20th Century Fox is a distributor, even though it's not explicitly listed, I did go ahead and use a two here. Uh, again, and that just tells us that that's a distributor we're dealing with. And since Los Angeles, California was not listed on this information, uh, I had to get that from the website. I went ahead and, and put that in brackets, which again just tells us it came from another I it came from another resource or and then it was the same thing with the publication date here and, and I guess this is one reason why I do the copyright date like when I have to put my copyright date here in brackets I think this is one reason why I go ahead and I do that second 264 so that way people know because the brackets can mean two different things it can mean the information came from someplace not on the item 
or we're substituting data there in this case. And so, again, it's just it's just a way of saying this is where I got the information from. Does that make sense? And if you joined us a little late, I'm just going ahead and reviewing the 264 because there seemed to be some confusion with the homework and with the questions I got. And I just want to make sure that everyone understands uh, what's going on here and because it is one of the bigger changes in MARC. And if we get to the three, the three XX, we will do that today. Oh, that's OK, Allison. Oh, and Lori, that's that's OK. <laughs> that happens. I just I noticed a couple people came in late and wanted to kind of clue you in as to what was going on today. And um, and if for some of you, if you want to go ahead and redo the assignment and turn it in like later today or on tomorrow or Monday, that's fine. You know, you don't have to do that. And I will have this 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 review session is post. It will be is posted on our website. And like I was saying, um, if we get to the three three X fields today, um, we may. If we don't, and if we don't, that's okay. We'll just push everything out a week. Okay. So my next here, I get kind of mean. Let me see if I can get to my next slide. Okay. And I have a question here from Rochelle. If you get your information, like a publication date, from an outside source, do you have to state anywhere where that information came from? That's a really good question. And you can. I did one record once. It was a really weird thing. It was some Native American film that had been shot like in the 1920s, 1930s, and it had been basically buried in the National Archives until someone stumbled on it and restored the film and then posted it on a website. Well, the people I was working for at the time, the agency I was working for, they had, I think, downloaded it onto a CD. And so in that case, I had to provide, and it didn't have any of the publication information there. So in that case, I I noted that it had where I had gotten the publication information from and I noted that in a 500 field. And it's not it's not necessary, but it kind of it just it's very situational. Does that answer your question? Yep, I'm assuming thank you does. So, um now I'm going to be kind of mean and make you guys participate a little bit. And look at these examples and tell me what the subfields would, would be. So in this example, what would your subfield A be? And that's correct, Washington, D.C. And I did this really nifty animation thing. Let's see if I can actually get it to work. Yay, it worked. OK. So what's your B going to look like? What are you going to see in the B? Very good. The American Psychological Association. And then, what's the C going to be? And this one gets a little tricky. And this was this was a concept I kind of had a hard time with. And when we went into RDA. So we don't. Okay, and the date is probably really, yeah, the date is a little confusing. I'm getting all sorts of things, 2003, 2002, 2003, 2001 in brackets. And so I, when I was kind of preparing this, I went ahead and put that 2001 in brackets because um, that was kind of what jumped out at me. But you probably could go ahead, you could go ahead and do probably, I would do 2003 because that's the most recent printing date. 
But is that a publication date? Are a printing date and a publication date one and the same? Even though this is the fifth edition. Um, I think it's the sixth printing of the fifth edition is what that means. But that's a really good question to ask. It's a good thing to think about. And so if I were to use 2003, I would put that in the C in the brackets because I, it's not a publication date. And does anyone know like what indicator you would use? Would you use more than one indicator? One for the first 264 and the four for the additional. That's correct, Alyssa. That's great. Yep, that's ex that's what I would do. Because again, if and, and you would only use that additional 264 if you use the copyright date in your C here. And you can't see when I take my pen and circle that. So, and I know guys, I know this is really confusing and it's not as clear cut as we would all probably like. But for me, that's kind of the fun of cataloging, is that you have to sit and think about this sometimes. And of course, if you're copy cataloging, it's more about making sure that the item in hand matches what the record you have. And I know some of you have kind of asked me about this. What if it doesn't match up exactly? And, and that's, a, that's a decision you have to make. Um, you know, for your library, what works best for your library. And for most libraries, they, um, you know, if most, if most of the information matches up, you know, if they use like the printing date instead of the copyright date, um, you know, that's fine. They accept it as is. For me personally, if I can figure out where they got the information from on the item, uh, you know, that's close enough for me. So I've got another Another example. So again, what is the A going to look like, your subfield A? Very good. Good. That's great. Yep, Chicago. And now you probably can guess what I'm going to say next. What's the B going to be? Good. Yep, the American Library Association. So that brings us down to the C. What are you going to do for the C? 2011. And is that a copyright date or a publication date? But yep, it's a publication date. So would you do that additional 264? Maybe, <laughs> maybe Rachel, Rachel has maybe with uh, a smiley face. <laughs> no, since it's the same as the copyright. And we have a question about the, and so before I answer the question about the assignment, um, we also had an optional and that's correct. It is optional. Since they are the same, uh, I would probably go ahead and just leave it alone and not do any more there. And so now um, Catherine has a question. Can we ask a question about one of the questions on the assignment? Yes, you can. Specifically loyalty and death. That had two copyright dates. Do you pick one for the first 264 field and then two more 264 fields to indicate you are using a copyright date and add another for the different date? That's a really, really good question. And that was something I was going to address. Let me go ahead and pull up the assignment. Um, let's see. Oops, we're not there yet. And 
can I pull this over? Or let me, oh, let's see, here we go. Okay. So yes, as many of you noticed, there were two copyright dates here on loyalty and death. And um, we had one for 1999 and one for 2003. And so when you're cataloging or working with something that is not in the original format, in this case, the original format was the book, and we're doing a new record for the new format, which is the, um, looks like they're cassettes. What I always do is I always catalog what I have in front of me. And and that's where I get most of my um, core information from, that, that author, that title, um, date of publication, um, publisher, uh, the description fields. And so in this case, what I would do is 2003 would be my copyright date because that's the copyright date of the cassettes. And that's what we're cataloging is the cassettes. We're not cataloging the book. So you wouldn't want to do um, record any of the information for the book. Does that make sense? Oh, good. Catherine, is that clear for you? Or do you need me to try and explain that another way? Okay, good, good, I'm glad. And what you can always do in the record is um, you could do like a 500 note. The 500 note is probably my favorite field because you can use it for just about anything. You can note that maybe the book was originally published in 1999. So 2003 and C and then an additional 264 for the copyright. Correct. And you would put that 2003 in your first 264 in brackets. Because, again, that's telling us, yep, in brackets. Way to go, Rachel. Way to go, everyone, actually. Because, like I said, this is not easy stuff. This this really isn't. There's There's a lot of inconsistencies, you know, what you accept, what you don't accept, and where you can substitute information. And... And so this this is not easy stuff, guys. And the other thing is, when I was in library school, and for those of you um, who have your master's in library science uh, and have probably and may have taken a cataloging class, uh, I'm trying to cram like a semester's worth of information into seven weekly sessions, and and so this is this is a lot of information you guys are getting, and it is it's a lot of information. So don't don't beat yourself up if this is confusing, you're confused or you feel like everyone else gets it, but you don't. It's it's yeah, it is. It's a lot of information. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. Um, let's do this. OK, got to be smarter than the computer. And let me see if I can go back. I got a few more examples here. Oops. OK. And I'm probably showing you stuff that's a little more complicated than what you're going to come across. And I think that's because if you can figure out the complicated stuff, you know, the easy stuff is going to be a snap. At least it is for me. And I hope it is the same for you. So we're back to we've got a DVD here. And um, because this information is really hard to read, I did go ahead and pull it out. So we could all read it. So, you know, guys all know what my first question is going to be. What's your A going to be? I can't see the PowerPoint. Oh, can't. Okay, I still see loyalty. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. Let's try this again. Are we seeing the PowerPoint now? Yes, okay.
So what's that A going to be? Yep, it's going to be Burbank, California. So what's the B going to be? Any guesses? Buena Vista Home Entertainment. That's correct. And so when you don't, <laughs> so when you don't have, this is one of those examples, when you don't, oh, Alyssa, you're jumping ahead, but it needs the other indicator that is correct. So this is one of those cases where a publisher isn't listed. And so because there isn't a publisher, but you've got that Bueno Vista Home Entertainment, you can go ahead and use that in your B. And so it needs a two, right? Yep, that is correct, Rachel. You guys are getting this. So now we all know what my second, my next question is going to be. What's the C going to be? What's that date going to be? Yep, yep, 1998 in brackets. And I bracketed it, yep, when I um, typed it in because it wasn't on the item. I couldn't, at least the information I have, I couldn't see it. And so I had to go check it. Um, I think I went to the Internet Movie Database, which if you work with movies a lot, it's a great resource if you need to kind of confirm um, who produced it or who, who, you know, published it or whatever. And as we already said, um, we're going to use an indicator, too, because we're using a distributor and not a publisher. And to confuse things even more, if you wanted to, um, like if there was nothing listed here or you didn't want to use Buena Vista Home Entertainment, you could always do um, publisher not identified in brackets. And we'd be cool with that. So I only have a few more examples, guys. Just making sure you get this. So what's that A going to be? Very good. Yep, New York. What's your publisher? Correct, the Modern Library. And you will see here in my answer, I did go ahead and do that it was a division of Random House, um, just because there's this little sentence here that says published in the United States by Random House. But you can just do the Modern Library. That's acceptable as well. And so any guesses about that darn C? Yep, 1992. And because we've, I see there are a few 1992s with brackets. Oops, that's, that's okay. Um, you, you know, it, it is a little confusing here because we have the Modern Library Edition was published in 1992. And I'm assuming that's a publication date because there's nothing telling me it's not. Um, and then, it looks like the biographical note, there's some additional information that was copyrighted in 1992. And so, um, yeah, I would have just assumed that the publication date is 1992. Okay, and, and we all know what indicator we would use. Yep, that one, yep. And because we have a publication date, we don't need to do an additional uh, 264 field. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, you can tell I had a lot of fun doing this. I was trying to find some kind of weird examples. <laughs> and so Rachel has already anticipated what my first question is going to be. So, yep, we're going to see New York. Sorry. Nope, that's fine. That's fine. 
And anyone want to guess about what um, the publisher is going to be? Yep, it's going to be D. Appleton and Company. And then, <laughs> yes, yep, we're going to have um, our 264, our, our, our C. Yep, it's gonna, it is going to be 1881. It is. And again, if you wanted to go ahead, because it was copyrighted in 1878, because it was different, um, you could go ahead and do um, a second. And I did here in this example. You could go ahead and do a second um, C, where you would list four as your indicator and then the copyright of 1878. OK. Dealer's choice, though, right? Yep, Rachel, it is. It's dealer's choice. That's a good way of putting it. And so this brings us to one of my favorite movies, Gross Point Blank being the other one. And I also think it's the best Star Trek movie. Anyway, who wants to guess what the A is going to look like? Yep, hard to read. Okay. Well, I don't know. Rachel, can you see the information I got up here in the upper right? Or is that hard to read for you as well? But yes, the answer is Hollywood, California. Oops, that, that's OK. And, and I do want to mention something about like um, in the publishing in this this place of publication field. <laughs> um, so you'll notice sometimes I have like in some examples, it was just Chicago or just Washington, D.C. And so. Um, if it's a smaller, like in that place, like with Chicago, you wouldn't need to do the state because I think everyone knows Chicago, that Chicago's in Illinois. But if it's a smaller place like Lincoln, I would probably do like Lincoln, Nebraska, um, because that tells people that it was published in Lincoln, Nebraska, especially if there's a lot of other towns named Lincoln. Or um, when I was in Montana and, and working for the state and cataloging state publications, it was always Helena, Montana. And if, for example, California wasn't listed and you felt like it should be there, you could just put that in brackets as, as information that's not on the item. I've been told to write exactly what's on the item. Is that not the case? So Alyssa, that's, that's one of those things where it gets kind of weird. Um, where it's not consistent, yes, writing exactly what's on the item is technically correct. Um, so if it was just Chicago, you could do just Chicago. If Chicago, Illinois had been listed, honestly, since Chicago is a major city and I think there's only one Chicago, um, you could just do Chicago. And um, so if you saw like Lincoln, N E, you would do Lincoln N E. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So then back to our example here, Wrath of Khan. What's your B gonna be? Yep. You guys are getting this. And if you're not, guys, or you feel like you just can't type fast enough, um, let me know. And I can, you know, certainly um, slow down and go back and, and start over. And so, yep, Mary's already anticipated what my next question is going to be, which is, it, it is, it's going to be 2012. Both Marys. And that's correct, Rachel. You could do an additional 264 for that copyright. And let's see, Rachel already answered the question about the second, in, about what that indicator is going to be. And, whoops, let me go back. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Go back. Okay. So I've got a couple of people saying one. Uh, Rachel said two. And this is one of those, Alyssa's saying two. Anyone else want to chime in? 
too. So this is this is one of those cases where, because it's not clear um, what Paramount Home Video is, are they the publisher? Are they the distributor? You could do a one and just assume it's the publisher, and that's cool. Um, if you knew that Paramount Home Video was a distributor, a distributing company, you could do two. So again, it's just it's whatever you want to do there. Both answers are acceptable. So I'm going to move on to the next example. We have the House Journal of the General Assembly of the State of Nebraska. And so we all know what my first question is going to be. What's going to go in your A? I got a couple of guesses here. Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska in brackets. Lincoln, Nebraska. Place of publication not identified. Let's see what my answer was. I have Lincoln and I have Nebraska in brackets. And And actually, you know, any of those, like place of publication is acceptable. Place, place of publication not identified is acceptable because technically there's nothing on here that tells me where this was published. Uh, I make an assumption that it is Lincoln because it says begin and held at Lincoln and then put Nebraska in parentheses or in brackets, excuse me, because it's not. Yes, Nebraska, I'm assuming Nebraska would be in brackets. And place of publication not identified would also be in brackets as well. I think that's what you're really asking, Rachel. Yes, okay, good. And so what is your B going to be? So this one's tricky. This one is really tricky. You have a couple of different options here. House Journal of the General Assembly. That is a good assumption, or the General Assembly, or the state of Nebraska. Those are all really good, or Nebraska State Legislature in brackets. Those are all really good because um, you could, because it does say published by authority. And so you could take that to mean the state of Nebraska. Let's see what I did. I did publisher not identified. And just because technically nothing here says who published it. And you can see that that does go in brackets because it's information not on the item. But like I said, you know, Nebraska, the state of Nebraska would be acceptable. Um, you know, the General Assembly, oh, lost audio. Your audio connection has been lost, attempting to reconnect now. Audio will not be recorded during this time, okay. Let me, okay. okay, please, okay, network. Okay, are we back? Hello, can anyone hear me? We lost audio and then it looks like my internet connection blinked out. Okay. 
Okay, go back. Okay, so it looks like the audio connection has been restored. The sound check works, but I can't hear the class. Okay. Um, log out and log back in. Oh, yay. Okay. Because I was having some connectivity issues at my end, but it looks like we're all back. And you, okay, thanks, Diane, for letting me know. And so Catherine has already anticipated. <laughs> Screen has frozen. Is it just me? Um, I don't know. Um, let me get out of here. Okay. Can you see my PowerPoint now? Okay, good, good. And so let's do this. Oops, go back. Okay, there we go. We're going to pretend no one saw the C there. So we all know what my next question is going to be. We're going to get back on track here. What's your publication going to be? 1873. Yep, yep. And I did see where someone, I think it was Catherine, had done the whole date. And so what a lot of people do in this case, uh, if you work with state publications a lot, you may see this. So 18, oops, go back. Not ready for David Gray yet. Um, 1873 would be your pub publication date. And because it's a publication date there would be no brackets or anything like that um, with this January 9th 1873 you could go ahead and put that in a 500 note um, I quite often do that and again it's just another way of saying you know kind of where you got the date from it's a more precise date uh, a lot of times with state publications this is really off subject but a lot of times with state publications things are published in Numerous, numerous times because they do updates or um, they revise. And so a lot of times I put that, I, I do that date in the 500 just in case someone is looking for one from a, a specific date. And it helps kind of differentiate that in the catalog then when you're looking at the notes. So I think we have one more example. We got a CD here. So, anyone want to guess what the A is going to be? Not identified. Anyone else want to guess before I go ahead and reveal the answer? U.S. Okay, so you can see I didn't go ahead and I didn't provide any place of publication. So let's see. So, oh, and I cannot spell here. Okay, place of public can unidentified. Correct, Allison. Could you, can you just not use the A subfield? No, Mary, you do have to use the A subfield. <laughs> you do. Um, 
And, and so you kind of put a placeholder in there, like the place of publication, which hopefully you can spell correctly. Um, and like Allison is saying, you can go ahead and look it up and substitute and put it in brackets. Yep, correct. That's always an option. It depends on how much work you want to do. Could you put in United States? Um, I, I wouldn't. And... That's because I know David Gray is British and he's based out of Britain. So I, I don't, I wouldn't just do United States. Well, yes, there you go. <laughs> and yes, Mary Austin. Yes, I do wish that, you know, if we didn't have the information, we could just not put the field in there. But unfortunately, we have to lesson learned. Well, Rachel, it is actually a really good assumption. It really is because there's nothing that tells you that it wasn't published anywhere so it could be that it was published in the United States. And you could do United States in brackets with a question mark if you wanted to. Uh, but because I know a little bit about David Gray, because he is one of my favorite artists, uh, for me, it's not something I would do. It's kind of that catalogers choice, dealers choice thing. So let's move on. So when in doubt, use not identified. Correct, Rachel. If you're not sure, you can. You can use not identified. So anyone want to guess what that B is going to be? Got a few guesses. And I know we're running short on time, and I think I'm almost done with the slide presentation. So, yep, that's correct, guys. It, it's going to be that IHT records. Rachel, you're getting ahead of me. That's okay. Oops, and I got ahead. Oh, what did I just do? Okay. <laughs> so, yes. No, it's okay, Rachel. It's okay. I'm just teasing you. So, let's oops, go back. Okay, anyway. Um, what's the C going to be, guys? Yeah, it is going to be 2005 um, because of that copyright date. You would do that in brackets. Yep. Yep. And that's, yeah, that is a copyright date. And would you, what would you do for your indicators? This is another tricky one. It's another one where there's, you know, a couple of different choices here. So Mary Austin says one. Rachel's saying two. Got another two from Allison. Another one from Rebecca. And anyone else? Lori. Hey, Lori. Good to hear from you. Lori says one. So most of you are saying one. And, yep, you could do a one because it's not telling us what the role of this corporate entity is. So a one is ac acceptable. You could do a two. Uh, if you, you know, knew that they were a distributor or it sounded like a distributor to you, you could do it too. That is perfectly acceptable too. Again, it's, it's, you know, most people aren't going to care about these, these details. It, it's such crazy catalogers. Um, and it's, like I said at the beginning, it's setting us up for the future too. When we have ILSs who can do, who, that really can take advantage of all these relationships we're doing. Um, and when we move away from Mark and into bib frame. So, so that's what a lot of this is. You may be going, well, I don't, I don't get this, but we're trying to set our, what us crazy Mary Austin, <laughs> speak for yourself, Mary. <laughs> no, I am crazy. I freely admit I'm crazy. Um, own it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so um, a lot of this data, a lot of what we're doing now, we're trying to set ourselves up for the future because um, the library world, we've kind of, I think, isolated ourselves. No one else used Mark. And so we're trying to get to a point where we can easily share data with other organizations, other entities, uh, regardless of what their metadata scheme is. And that's kind of off subject. So that's probably more than you wanted to know. And then um, you all know what my next question is going to be. Would you do a subfield with a four, that indicator four? Yep, yep. 
And again, that's optional, guys. It's something I do personally. It's optional. So it's, again, um, if you don't do it, it's not like the cataloging police are going to hunt you down and say, you're doing your cataloging records wrong. No, no. It's, it's personal preference. It's like I said, it's just something I do. So that is the end of my PowerPoint. Yep, no more slides. So we've got a few minutes left. I'm not going to get into the 33X fields. Like I said, um, if you want to go ahead and redo. Oh, can I ask a question about the 250 field? Again, loyalty and death. Yep, Catherine, I think I know what you're going to say. But go ahead and ask. Two of them. Okay, so no, you cannot do two 250 fields. Um, that's one of those fields that's non-repeatable. And let me see if I can just show. Let me see if I can get out of here and get back to. So on the website, we have... Both abridged and a library edition, yeah. So you, you can't do um, a 250 for each. Um, what you can do is you could put, and I'm just pulling this up that tells you what's repeatable and what's non-repeatable. If you know our homework has errors, do you really want us to resubmit? I just as soon as not unless you want us not to. Um, Mary, that's, that's clear. That's up to you. That really is. It, it's personal. Like I said, you, you're not getting graded on this. It's just a check in the, the grade book, so to speak. Um, I thought I would extend that option to people who, who felt really confused, really just didn't get it and want to take the time to go through and make sure they, they're understanding it. Um, Yes, the PowerPoint will be posted. It's posted now, but I made some changes afterwards, so I'll go back and post the most recent um, version. And so on this handout, back to Catherine's question, this tells us addition statement. What's repeatable and what's non-repeatable? And the addition statement that's that in R that says it's non-repeatable. So um, you have to make a choice. Um, what you could do is you could do um, library edition as your main 250, as your 250. And then if you wanted to go ahead and note, sorry, I have to go to a staff meeting. Okay, Alice. Okay, Diane. Have fun at your staff meeting. And we're going to wrap things up really soon. So um, like I was saying, that 250 is non-repeatable. And what you could do is do a 500 note. Um, that then says like abridged edition, or if you wanted to do both, um, abridged and library edition, you could do that all in a 500 note. And uh, I think on Monday, what I'm going to do is I'll post the answers on Monday to the homework, and um, and I'll have probably more. I'm not fine yet because I haven't posted them yet. <laughs> that that's okay, Rachel. <laughs> um, and I'm going to detail, um, I've, I've written out what, why things are the way they are. Um, and so I thought I would wait till Monday to do that in case anyone wanted to go ahead and redo their assignment. Like I said, that's entirely optional. So Catherine, did I answer your question somewhere in there about the 250 field? Yep, okay. So we are, can you let us know via email if we need to take another crack? If you don't hear from me, you don't need to redo it. So let me put it to you that way. If I feel like you really need to redo it, I'll let you know. Um, if you feel like you need to redo it, go ahead and resubmit it. And so we're at 11. I know people have other things they need to do. If there are any more questions, I'm more than happy to stay late. Uh, I don't think anyone else is using GoToMeeting after me here at the Library Commission.
If not, I will get this posted. I will go ahead and transcribe the questions um, that had to do kind of with the assignment um, that didn't have to do so much with the PowerPoint because I think, well, we all know what most of those questions were. <laughs> Or my questions. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my, my conversation here. I'm assuming everyone knows what I mean. So if there aren't any more questions, you're welcome. Then you are free to go. And if you something pops up later, go ahead and email me, and I will do my best to answer it. So thank you all for coming and no assignment for this week. So I'm going to stop the recording because it looks like there aren't any more questions and I'll have this posted by the end of the day.